Hi, my name's Julie Marsh and I'm a Senior Associate Solicitor in the Medical Negligence Team at Boys Turner. I regularly work with people who've suffered from Corder Equina Syndrome and are living with the effects of this every day. Today, I'm talking to Stephen Smith, Treasurer of the Corder Equina Champions Charity and part of the Facebook support groups the charity runs. Ten years ago, Stephen was suffering with bad sciatic back pain and was out shopping when he experienced a worsening of his symptoms and red flags for Corder Equina Syndrome. Stephen went to see his GP, who recognised the loss of bladder control as a red flag and sent him on to accident and emergency for further investigations. After a wait of some hours, Stephen was transferred to his local specialist neurosurgery hospital and had a, an operation to address a herniated disc in his back. Corder Aquino syndrome has changed his life forever. Today, he's here to tell us a bit more about Corder Aquino, what has changed for him as a result of his condition and what support the charity can offer to those living with the condition. Hi Stephen, thanks for joining me today. Morning, all right, folks. So, Corder Aquino syndrome. Um, I think if I asked 100 people on the street if they knew what the condition was or what it meant to somebody living with the condition, I think only a very few would really be able to answer. Had you yourself heard of Corder Aquino before you experienced the condition? Not really. Um, I've not really heard of. Um, a few years previously, I had a similar sort of experience. Um, similar, say, a different walk. Uh, I had major surgery on my spine. I got recovered from that. Nothing happening. But no one mentioned Corder Aquino. I'd never heard of it. The first time I'd heard of it is after that incident when I went shopping, is when my GP said Corner Aquino syndrome and he rushed me to the local AD. That was the first I'd ever heard of it. Never heard of it before. Right. And despite surgery to treat the condition, you're still living with quite extreme problems. Can you explain the issues that you still have? Yeah, my main issue now is the mobility. Um, left leg has been left severely nerve damaged from from a first but it'll be second operation. Um, from the knee down, awful, 24-7 pain, left foot, I can't put any pressure on it. I put with walking aids or wheelchair longer distances. Um, the pain is unbearable, like electric shocks, burning feeling, um, like you walk on ice or bed of nails half the time. Um, I also get intermittent but the bladder problems um, still. 10 years, and um, there's also the part of it, um, still from that period of time. For the back aches, due to nerve damage, it's not relieved any pain down in the left leg. But yeah, mobility is my main, main issue. Not being able to walk, and 10 years I've been able to walk for a long time. And they obviously affect your life in quite a profound way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going to work. Um, it's affected the family as well as myself. Um, obviously, we've been able to work with my family at that time. I have three young children, both grown up now. Um, married with three children, that's affected their lives as well as my own. Um, it's it, it's changed my lifestyle dramatically from healthy to someone that's not the person I was at all. But obviously, I used to be a police officer as well, so I was a bit healthy. Um, some of the car was walking all the time. So not able to walk. That's the main major issue, but mainly myself. Um, and being in constant pain, it does really affect you from day to day. It really does. Every day is a different pain, a different day. Um, also fatigue, tiredness. Um, it, it drains you. It really does drain you. Um, about what the doctor give you, what they say, I don't even realise about pressure. I am this really, it just needs you. And what other treatment, apart from the surgery that you initially had, have you had to address the ongoing symptoms of Corder Equina syndrome? I know, over the 10 years, I've had, I've had about 10 surgeries in, in the years that I've had different surgeries. Um, obviously, I've had a spinal cord stimulator fitted with two different types of those. I've had infections of those, which have meant rewiring. Um, more surgeries. I've had the spine has also been affected, so I've been walking. So I've had this get this on the top of my neck, um, which is my neck, my shoulders, and my left arm, and hand. So when they keep ripping me left hand, I'll be too. So I'm walking through it. 
because it's obviously uh, affected as well. So I'm also got osteoarthritis in my neck due to all this as well. Uh, so it's an ongoing, everything's ongoing, 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 ongoing. Um, and then after the first operation, it was continuous hospital. Yeah, and as the years go by, I seem to pick up something else in my body as a result of this. Probably the way I do walk and things like that. Yes. So an ever evolving kind of process of yeah, learning yeah. more about the injury and, and, and the ongoing effect that it's taking on your body. Yeah. And the Corda Equina Champions Charity are working to raise awareness of the syndrome and make both the general public and medics more aware of it so that treatment can be offered promptly and also to help people who are living with the condition access appropriate follow up care, which, as you said, is needed throughout the rest of their life. Um, how long have you yourself been working with the charity? Uh, I first heard about the charity as originally the Corda Equina Association. Um, it was, I googled it when I came to the hospital, seeking advice, and ever since then, it was 10 years ago, nine, nine, 10 years ago, um, that's where I started getting my advice from. Uh, found out all about the syndrome, and I've been with them ever since. Um, I met Claire Thorne, but the founder of it, and so we've been together since. And from then, I've sort of stuck with her and carried. Um, the awareness on with her, going to events and going to group meeting um, and basically helping her out with everything on the Facebook pages and going to events, meeting with people, basically helping her spread the word about the Gordy Flowers and awareness really. Um, and it's gone from there to being helping out the jump on the charity group, become the treasurer, become the support officer for the North West, helping the North West people out. And and all sorts really just evolved and evolved just from or you can syndrome, you know. But it's it's gone big every at least from my you know hospital, not knowing what it was, to being heavily involved in awareness. And you've done talks to paramedics and been yeah. involved in hospital seminars and yeah. meeting with equipment providers and all of that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, we got invited to uh, a, par a paramedic conference in Yorkshire, and 300 paramedics were there. And we were invited to actually to give a talk about cardiac the syndrome. Um, we gave a talk about what cardiac is, how it affects people, um, what the actual what quite actually is. And I got up and gave a talk from a patient's point of view. And that was the first time I gave it a big talk. And the paramedics, I actually got a round of applause from them all. It was so fascinating from a patient's point of view. They never understood how it affected people that way. It was fantastic. And it really did open their eyes. And then, yeah, from there, we got on to the Walton Centre. We were invited to be a patient research partner. The research that we're doing that led to um, meeting with neurosurgeons all over this country, so America, Canada, Australia, because they were all doing research and it required us to sort of, you know, make things better for people. Yeah, so that was very, very interesting. Um, met the medical suppliers and you know, all sorts of people like that, and it's all spreading awareness out, helping people out, which is, and there'll be more things to come as well. Yeah. That to me is a great way of you know, saying who we are and recording quite a patience as well. Uh, it gives me a sort of voice for people like that. And it, it's great if we can help people out like that. I really do get pleasure you know, from that. Well, it's fantastic. Um, and I know that Corder Aquina syndrome affects men and women differently. Um, and I understand that you help the charity run one of the men's support group pages on Facebook and social media. And um, why do you think it's so important that that facility is there? Um, for men, it can be very uh, private for us, um, sensitive issues for them, especially with the sexual dysfunction and the mental health issues. Um, it's a place for them on this site where they can talk freely, um, get advice amongst themselves. Um, the main thing is the privacy, to be able to talk freely. And it's a great forum um, for them. Um, 
and express themselves. It's a place where there's no worries or anything like that, but it helps them immensely. Um, there are products out there to help, and there are drugs out there to help, and the medical advice there, put them in the right direction, put them away together, and get this sort of help. And, and they're, they're totally aware of it, a lot of males. Uh, some males don't even speak to the partners about the problem, um, but it gets worse, the relationships get worse. So it really does help them out, and you get a lot of positive feedback about this as well. So, yeah, it's a fabulous um, facility to have, and we all deal with things differently. So it's great that men can come together and talk about their experience of the condition um, in private, as you say, but share it with with other people that are going yeah. through it. I think there's a lot of embarrassment as well uh, with men. They don't want to pass that in people, and if it's there, it's there. It saves them a lot of embarrassment, you know, it's other people. So if someone there to ask, definitely to ask. Yeah. I know from working with my clients that a life-changing injury can have a really profound effect on mental health. And you've experienced that firsthand yourself, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, when I first uh, came to the hospital, uh, first I was getting, from getting over surgery. As time went by, the line is um, getting to more like, uh, I don't know what happened. I was in depressed. Now and this and the other, um, whereas life is like, now I can't walk, I can't do this, I can't do that. And you start getting more depressed and more depressed. I didn't realize really what was going on in my health. Um, the, the family that started to notice it more than me. I felt I was taking things out on my family more and my wife and kids, really. Um, I didn't want to go out and do anything. Um, and it was affecting my wife in particular. And, wasn't the person that I normally was at all. Um, and it got to the point where I said, well, how do you get uh, some sort of care? You know, where do you go? And that hit, you know, I will have to get help. And that was a few counseling sessions and it was fantastic. They came out totally different after that. And I think it's what made me very positive now. Um, but if I hadn't got the help initially, I don't know what would have happened. My mind wasn't it should have been at all. I had to think, for family's sake, for my own sake, you know. So, yeah, mm. um, I always encourage people if you get to that point, you should go and seek some sort of you know, you to get out of life and go from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, so it's a major issue mental health with body provider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so important to seek help, but I know that's a big step for anyone to take. Um, but I've also got clients that do very much approach their injury and the way they deal with it with, with laughter and with humour and, and, and they laugh it off certainly to friends and family and people who are close to them but it's those moments where you retreat into yourself where you need to make sure you have the tools to deal with you know what you're experiencing and, and come yeah. out the other side of it. Yeah, that's where like, probably quite a chunk in the basic stages help a lot of people as well with the support groups or regional support now and there is help out there for everybody there are people to support to now we have our helplines we have peer group support officers in every region there's someone to listen to people all the time like myself in the northwest everyone will get to the us we're here we're there to support you we're there to talk to you um you know it's not just about it with ourselves because we've been through it but even though you know people might a lot of people don't want to get that help but there is help out there either from councils or People, mm -hmm. people, people should and it's important to support the friends and family of those living with it as well so that they can help support the individual and recognize when they need that bit of extra support as well people always forget the family the family suffer just as much as they could if by the patient and the family is just as important that family has to look after the person suffering the cord of corona and it's very often people forget those because they don't realise what's going on as well. Um, and they have to come to terms with this disability. And for some people, they're stuck in a wheelchair forever, or they have other problems. It's just important that the family get that support as well. And on 1st of October, in 2020, it's the first quarter equina syndrome day. 
Um, the aim is to raise awareness of the red flag symptoms so that people don't experience a delay in diagnosis of the condition, which is sadly something that I see happen, um, and with, of course, devastating consequences. I know that you and the Claire, you and Claire and all at the charity are working tirelessly to raise awareness of cauda equina syndrome and offer support to those people affected by it and those living with it. Thank you so much for joining me today, for sharing your story, uh, telling us about the, the work that the charity do and the support that they're offering to people who are living with cauda equina syndrome. All right, Julia, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stephen.